In this video, I'm going to implement an assert handler on this microcontroller. And if you've heard about assertions before, you probably know them as those single line statements uh, that abort your program when a certain condition is not true or fulfilled. And aborting uh, or crashing your program on a regular computer with an operating system such as Windows or Linux is a reasonable thing to do because the operating system is there to clean up after you so that you can continue using the computer or processor. On a microcontroller, things work a bit differently. There is only one program and it's running bare. And there is no operating system, so there is no nice way of crashing or aborting the program. Even so, if implemented right, assertions can still be very useful on a microcontroller. Especially during development to catch dumb programming mistakes. Uh, and it's also therefore something that's nice to get implemented early in a project. And also why I'm talking about it at this point of the video series. So my plan for this video is primarily to create a useful assert implementation to allow me to simply spread a search across my microcontroller code. Uh, this will be a search that triggers at runtime while the code is executing. Uh, there is also another type of assert called a static assert that triggers at compile time, which I will also talk about later on in this video. There are different ways of implementing an assert function on a microcontroller. And it's really up to you as a developer to implement something that's appropriate and useful for your particular project. In this project, however, I will implement an assert function that does the following. First of all, as a safety measure, it's going to disable and stop the motors, because I don't want the robot to keep on driving in a faulty state. But since I don't have a motor driver in place yet, this is something I will implement in a future video, and I will just leave this as a to-do for now. Then I'm going to print where the assertion happened. And this is also something I will implement in a future video because right now I don't have the trace functionality in place either. And thirdly, it's going to trigger a breakpoint if a debugger is attached. And this is something that I will be implementing in this video. And at last, I'm going to have the assert function go into an endless while loop where it's going to blink the test LED on my board. And I will have it stay here until I manually reset the microcontroller. And this is the second thing that I'm going to be implementing in this video. Overall, the goal with my implementation is to make the assert as easy to detect and localize as possible. So let's get into the code now. I begin by creating a new local git branch. For the assert implementation, I then create a set of files called asserthandler.c and asserthandler.h and put them in my common directory. And then I add the C file to my makefile. And I create a function called asserthandler which is the function that's going to contain my assert implementation. And I wrap it in a define macro named assert, all uppercase. I name things like this to differentiate them from the assert implementation in the standard library. And by the way, it's common practice to wrap the assert handler in a macro like this, since it makes it easy to add a compile time switch to switch the assertions off, which is sometimes done when the product goes out to production or the customer. But turning off a search is an opinionated topic that I'm not getting into here. Wrapping it in a macro like this also makes it possible to utilize preprocessor directives to get the file name and line number of where the assert happened, which I will use later on when I add a print or trace in my assert handler. Then I add a small test function to test the assert inside my main file and make sure that things compile. Once again, in this video I'm just implementing the breakpoint and the LED blinking and I will add the tracing and stopping of the motors in future videos. And I'm first going to implement the breakpoint. And the way breakpoints normally work with a debugger is that you mark a line of code in your IDE. And once the execution reaches this point, the debugger halts execution. What I'm going to do here is similar, but the difference is that instead of manually marking out the breakpoint, I will add a line of code that triggers it programmatically a so-called software breakpoint, or in other words, a special instruction that when the debugger sees it, halts the execution. This is really useful because if an assertion happens when I have the debugger attached, it will trigger a breakpoint and I can immediately inspect the call stack to know where it happened, as well as inspect any registers and so on. Exactly which instruction you need to use to do this will depend on the particular microcontroller. I couldn't find any good documentation for my microcontroller, the MSP430, but searching the forums, I found that the instruction that triggers the breakpoint is the one with OP code 4343, meaning I can get the breakpoint to trigger by writing a line of code that translates to this instruction, 
This is easy with the TI compiler because it has an intrinsic for it uh, that is a built-in uh, function and uh, I can demonstrate this by opening up the IDE and create a small project using the TI compiler. So I'm just going to use the Blink uh, the LED basic example project and selecting my particular microcontroller. So if I call this uh, intrinsic uh, underscore underscore opcode with opcode 4343, compile and run it, it should trigger the breakpoint automatically. I had some issues with the connection here for some reason. I had to reconnect my launchpad to get it to work. So as usual, when you run the debugger, it first halts the execution at the beginning, but then if I resume, it halts the execution after my breakpoint instruction. So it's working as expected. Then I can also open the disassembly view to see which assembly instruction this OP code translates to. So it translates to clear B uh, register three. And this is actually something that I'm going to need to know uh, now that I'm going to do the same thing with the other compiler, uh, the compiler that I'm using, the GCC compiler. So if I create the same Blinky project again, but using the GCC compiler instead, and then try to use the same intrinsic underscore underscore OP code, it doesn't compile because the GCC compiler doesn't support the same intrinsics or built-in functions as the TI compiler. So I have to do things a different way. I have to use another function or intrinsic to achieve the same thing. It was not immediately obvious at first how I was going to do that, but then I realized that I could use the intrinsic that the GCC compiler has for executing assembly instructions and simply use the assembly instruction from the disassembly view that I just showed. Now if I compile this and run it, it triggers a breakpoint in the same fashion as the TA compiler. And looking at the disassembly view, it corresponds to the same OP code 4343 as expected. So with a way to trigger the breakpoint programmatically, I can then go ahead and import my own project into the IDE, which I can do by creating an empty project, and then drag my source folder into the workspace. I also have to add the source folder as part of the include directories so that CC Studio can find the files, and also add the define to build for the launchpad. Then I just double check that it also compiles. After that, I open the implementation file for the assert handler and add the line of code for triggering a software breakpoint, the line of code that I just demonstrated. And I put it inside a defined named breakpoint for clarity. And I add an explaining comment on top. So now if I test this by first compiling and running it without the breakpoint by commenting the breakpoint out, the test assert function in main.c should run, but it should end up in the while loop at the end of the assert handler, which I can see by manually pausing the execution. And then if I uncomment the breakpoint, and also make sure that the code compiles, I forgot the semicolon there, and then run it, I should end up triggering the breakpoint. And I do good. With the breakpoint sorted out, I can jump out of the ID and get back to the command line and my normal editor. Uh, but before I continue here, I just want to update the make file here to point to another version of CC Studio because I downloaded a new version while making this video. And then I just compile and flash from the command line to verify that everything still works. Then I can go on to implement the next part of the assert handler, blinking the LED. Currently, I can blink an LED by toggling a GPIO using my IE functions, uh, which I've showed before. But I thought it would be nicer to actually have a dedicated LED driver instead. So I create two files for this, led.c and led.h, and put them under the drivers directory, and add led.c to my makefile. Inside this driver, I add two functions, uh, LED init and LED set, and one enum to represent the available LEDs. I only have one, uh, the test LED, so perhaps it's a bit overkill to have a separate driver like this, 
Uh, but anyway, then I have another enum to represent the state of the LED, whether it's on or off. And as always, a little comment at top of the header. Then I jump over to the implementation file to sketch out the implementation for these functions. I am going to use the IE functions here, uh, but in LED init I'm not going to initialize or configure the IE pin, because that should already be configured uh, when I initialize all of the IE pins in IO init. But what I'm going to do instead is to have an assertion here that verifies that it actually has the correct configuration. And I'm going to use that as a sanity check to ensure that IO init has been called before I call LED init. And then I'm going to have another assert to verify that I don't accidentally call LED init multiple times because that should never happen. And in LED set I'm also going to assert to ensure that LED init has been called before I set the LED. And I marked arguments as unused for now just so that I can get the code to compile before I move on. What I like about the search is that they not only serve as uh, sanity checks uh, for myself, but they also serve, kind of serve as documentation by making my assumptions explicit. I mean, one can assume that LED init must be called before LED set, but with an assert there is absolutely no doubt about it. So getting on with the implementation, first I add a variable to keep track of whether LED init has been called or not. Then I check this variable inside the assertions. As always, I of course miss adding the required includes, so my compilation fails. Then to check if the IO pin connected to the LED has the correct configuration, I need to add two new IO functions. One IO function to get the current configuration by reading the IO registers. And another function that takes two configurations and compares them. So to get the current configuration for a certain pin, I just need to access the right bit in the right register. I access the registers in these arrays, and if you want to know more about how all of this IO code works, you should check out my previous video where I explain how I program GPIOs. And then I assign them to the IO configuration struct that I pass as a pointer argument to this function. While doing this, I noticed one issue here. When I cast the pin bit value to the enum value for the direction register, it got the wrong enum value because when it's input direction the pin value is 0 and when it's output direction the pin va bit value is 1. So I have to reverse the order here in the enum for the casting to be right. Then I compile, or no I don't, I fix a typo and then I compile. And then in the function where I compare the configurations, I compare each value of the structs individually and return true if they are all equal, otherwise false. And then back inside the LED driver, I first create a static struct that contains the configuration I expect the LED pin to have. I then retrieve and compare it to the current configuration and assert that the result is true. Then I build the code once again, or it didn't rebuild here because I forgot to save the file. And finally to set the LED on or off in LED set, I just call IO set out. I test the LED driver by replacing the code inside my test function in main.c. I compile it, flash it, and look to see that the LED blinks. Then I also replace the code in my other test function to also use the new LED functions. And compiling and making sure that that works as well. To demonstrate that the assertions I just added inside the LED driver actually work, I can jump back into the IDE and run the test function that blinks the LED again. For example, if I call LED init twice, it should trigger the first assertion in LED init. <laughs> 
which I can verify by navigating up in the call stack. Then I can try to not call IO init before calling LED init, which should trigger the next assertion where I compare the IO configurations. So if I comment this out here, compile and run, this assertion triggers instead. And if I don't call LED init at all, I should trigger yet another assertion, but now inside LED set instead. Which I do. So all the search seems to be working. And finally, if I run the code normally, no assertions trigger. Okay, so then my initial plan was to also use this new LED driver inside my assert function. But then I realized that I couldn't do that because then I would call functions that already have asserts inside them. And if the condition in the assert is false, I would end up calling the assert function recursively until I get a stack overflow. To get around this, I could of course ensure that I don't uh, run into an assert inside my assert or that I don't use asserts in my LED functions. But to me, it seemed like a better idea to just reduce the code dependencies in my assert handler. As such, I decided to just write to the IO registers directly uh, instead to make the assert handler as isolated and standalone as possible. In addition, I write to the IO registers for both the LED on the launchpad and the robot because I want the assert to work properly even if I build for the wrong target by mistake. Compile, fix include and compile again. Then I busy loop blinking the LED with some delay in between. And as I said before, I want to be stuck in the assert indefinitely until I manually reset the microcontroller. To see that this works, I call LED init twice to trigger an assert and then look to see that LED blinks after I flash the code. Blinking the LED like this when an assert occurs is mostly going to be useful as a visual feedback when I don't have the debugger attached or trace logs to a terminal, so kind of like a last resort. While at it, I also want to take the opportunity to wrap the delay cycles intrinsic that I use for busy waiting inside a new defined call busywait ms, which takes milliseconds as argument instead of cycles, because it's annoying and less readable to think in terms of cycles. By default, MSB430 runs at 1 MHz, uh, so 1 million cycles per second. I divide by 1000 to get milliseconds. I'm going to increase this clock rate to 16 MHz in a later video. I then go ahead and replace all occurrences of delay cycles with my new busy weight define. And yes, this define definitely makes the code easier to read. I then compile and flash the LED blink example again, just to see that my new busy define macro also works. After all of these code changes, it was then time for the usual drill. Format and static analyze the code and build it for both targets. Add the files to git. and create a new commit. It turned into a pretty long commit message here, uh, which indicates that I should probably have divided this into several commits instead. Then I push my local branch to GitHub. Open a pull request and see that the CI pass. I don't merge it at this point because I also want to use the same pull request for my next commit. That was all I wanted to implement in my runtime assert handler in this video. But before I go, I also want to quickly show an example of a static assert as well. In contrast to the assert handler I just implemented, a static assert triggers at compile time and it's not something I need to implement a custom handler for. I can just use the standard declaration. Static assert can be used in places where you already know at compile time whether something should be true or false. This can for example be if you want to check the size of a certain data type. There are generally going to be fewer use cases for static assert compared to runtime assert, but they should always be preferred over runtime assert, because the earlier you can catch a mistake, the better, and compile time comes before runtime.
One use case for a static search that I can think of in my code right now is to check the size of the enum I use for naming my IO pins. Ideally, the size of this enum should be one byte to save flash space, because all of the enum values can be represented in a single byte since they are fewer than 256. And I can verify that it only takes up one byte by using a static assert. So inside io.h, I include assert.h and then add a static assert somewhere in the code. It doesn't matter where I add it, as long as the file I'm adding it to is part of the compilation. Currently, this enum doesn't actually take up one byte, it takes up two bytes, because by default enums are compiled as two bytes with this compiler and microcontroller, and that's why the static assertion also fails. I must add a compile time flag, dash f short dash enum, to make the compiler make the enum values as small as possible. So after adding this compile time flag and compiling again, I don't get the compile error anymore. Then I build my code for both targets, format it and run static analysis. I add my changes to git, create a new commit, and push it to GitHub to the same pull request. I quickly go through my changes in GitHub to see if I missed anything. I hadn't, so after the CI pass, I merge the pull request. Okay, so while editing this video, I realized I forgot to replace the to-dos I previously added in the IO code. So I'm just going to add this in here now so that it's part of this video. So create a new branch, since I already merged the previous one, and go into i.c and just replace the to-dos here for the hardware de the type detection and use a search instead. And then I compile for both targets, add the files to git, or well I have to format and run static analysis as well, and create a small commit. and push the new branch to GitHub, create a pull request, and wait for a CI to pass, and then merge the pull request. So that was everything I wanted to say about a search in this video, uh, but I will keep on adding a search in my code wherever it's appropriate as I add more code throughout this uh, video series. Uh, but that was all for today, so see you next time.